I'll call this meeting to order and the board exited closed session at 7.15 with no action to report. Uh, so we are now on item D, the agenda. Does anyone have any changes? Or? I would like you to switch item, the order of five and six, or H five and six. Take six before five, please. Okay. Is there any objections? No objections. Okay. Do we need a motion for that? No. Okay. Uh, anything else? Anything from the public on the agenda? All right. Moving on to item E, consent calendar. Oh. I move to adopt the agenda with the change suggested. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you for that. Uh, consent calendar. I need to have a motion. I move to approve the consent calendar as presented. Second. Discussion? I don't know. One little thing in the minutes on the parks and recreation. Matters from an inch and a half down. Yeah. It says that I stated let's see, that the to remove the columns from the park maintenance building and relocate. I think was the word. Remove would cause a very short maintenance <laughs> building. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Anything else, sir? That was all. Okay. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. During the bill, paid bills. Yes. Uh, we all caught up with PG&E. Uh, except for the latest billing I just got this week. So, what I see is Soul Ed and PG&E. So the combination for August is about thirty-seven. Is that high or low? Normal? Um, it would be normal. Okay. Is that a huge savings from previous? Um, it's definitely a savings. I don't okay. have a number directly in front of me. All right. But uh, sure. Okay. All right. Anything else from the board on the consent calendar? Uh, comments, questions from the public? Okay. So um, my name is John Borrell. You all. And I missed last month's meeting, so I didn't get a chance to comment on the, I'm not sure what you're calling it, the So, hold building. on, we're on the consent calendar. I oh, I'm sorry, I thought you asked for... Uh, we're still on item E on the okay. agenda. We're still on the consent calendar, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there's a teensy, teensy, teensy little wording issue, and I, I know it's kind of insignificant, but I would like it to be fixed. Um, when I was talking about the board member that put out a posting on the next door website that was kind of embarrassing and negative. I thought that it reflected badly on the board member and the board, and I requested that not all posts be reviewed. You know, I mean, this is not censorship, but I would think that some some posts that are not like for sale, uh, yard Sorry, sale. I'm, what I'm trying to do is explain to the two people that were not here what I was discussing and what I really said. And what I said was, um, it's in the minutes. I would like the minutes corrected because the minutes say that I requested that all postings from board members on Nextdoor be reviewed and I did not say that. What I said was, Posts like not for sale, not for lost cats, not for you know vacation rentals or whatever, but just something that's a little bit uh, controversial be at least reviewed by somebody before it gets put out on next door. Because the one that I read um, that I had seen was ref it was a negative reflection. There were negative responses, and I just thought that it would it reflected poorly on the board. So it wasn't all posts, it was for some posts. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, I, I just want some clarification. Um, uh, there was a statement saying that we're saving a lot of money on solar. 
uh, from the past, and I'm just wondering if, at what tariff level we're talking about. Are we talking about the high tariff level that we're saving money, or is it a lower, year, are we down at a lower tariff level? Year over year. So you can quantify that? Sure. <clears throat> Thanks. And I do have a question on bills paid, okay, under consent calendar. Um, I still have not been able to find any more bills from Mr. Hansel starting with May 18th. Now we've had two bills from him that were almost $12,000, which is what his estimate was for the whole shebang. And in the last five months, we have not received any bills. I just want to double check. Carolyn, do you know that that's true? We have not received any bills from him. And wouldn't it be best practices, Ms. Perry? Um, you like best practices. Don't you think it would be good to have bills coming in so that we know exactly how much the architect is charging the taxpayers? Because we want to make sure that we're not going way, way, way overboard and maybe we could make some corrections before he ends up charging us a lot of money. So I, I just think that y'all ought to think about why are we waiting five months to find out how much we're being charged. Thanks. All right, so I will call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'm going to abstain because I wasn't here. Uh, I guess I will abstain. Okay. You, you, don't, you don't actually have to. Oh, don't have to? No. Oh. Okay, never mind. I'll vote in favor of it. Sorry for that. Sorry. Still, what do you think? I said I first. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Um, okay, so now moving on to item F public comment open time for items not on the agenda. So I'm just going to read our little blurb before the underneath that. Speakers are asked to limit comments to three minutes. Speakers may comment only on non-agenda items within the subject matter jurisdiction of the district. The board may not take action on, consider, or debate items not on the agenda, except under narrow circumstances meeting statutory tests. Response to comments on non-agenda items will be limited to factual information or clarifying questions from staff or board. The president may refer the matter to staff or to a future meeting agenda. I'm just going to set my timer for three minutes. So, floor's open. Uh, yeah, so my name is John Boro, and I want to comment on the maintenance shed building, whatever it's being called. Um, I wasn't at the meeting uh, last month, so I just want to make some comments. And I gathered 100 signatures out there in that location, so I'm speaking for the uh, people that signed the petition. So I wanted to say, first, I think that the 3 0 vote to move forward is actually a, a good thing, because hopefully that will allow the board to get more information out to the public and allow more discussion to be had. And one of the things Jeff said, based on a, a video I saw, it, is that that will enable you to get a landscape plan done. Go out to a landscape architect. Is that true? Okay. Um, was it was it awarded? Did you go out and get it awarded? Not at this point in time. Okay. Will the committee, uh, will the community uh, be involved with the landscape architect at all regarding their uh, concerns, or is it just mainly? the board that's going to interface. Well, anything presented to the board would happen at a public session. Okay. So there's no, okay. Um, also, one other thing I wanted to ask, is there a preliminary schedule for the project, i.e., you know, any benchmarks you want to get along the way? Um, John, I'm happy to talk to you about this kind of more offline rather than have a back and forth on it during a public comment okay. time. Okay, you know what? But uh, the, I will say, okay. uh, the schedule is largely dictated in terms of construction activities by the biological assessment that's been published and it has very strict timelines as to when certain things can happen. So what does that mean? And When's the, what's the drop dead? What do you hope to get? So this is off, whatever. What does that mean? Does that mean you have a date in mind? When that means there's only certain windows by which certain activities can happen, such as demolishing the old building or things like that, in accordance with the other things. Okay. So okay. I believe it's in the fall is when that happens. So you're you're looking at it before some of those timings a year out, and it's all kind of laid out in the mitigation monitoring plan too. So that plan is online somewhere. Yep. 
Okay, with the dates? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then regarding the budget, um, last time uh, somebody asked about a budget, Jeff mentioned you had 257000 in Measure A funds. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Does the board have any estimate on what this proposed building is going to cost? What it might cost? Will the $257,000 cover what you think it might cost? So, so this is not really a time for like bombarding the board with. I mean, I said I, I wanted to make my. So Eric has made himself our district manager well, available I'm, to even kind of go over the details because this is not something that you know is an agenda item. So it's a kind of concrete comment. Absolutely. Making so, comments. Okay. So, right, All right. So those, those are my comments. Do you have a budget? Okay. Right, so and it, what's the estimate? So at the minimum, you should have a wrong. No wrong is. So that's the end of the time. So but I, we discussed over here and. You right. can have five minutes. Right. So, but I've got lunch. lunch. I, it's per person. So right, again, you got to give you. Uh, you can talk to Eric offline, and, and yeah. we're going to move on. All right. At the minimum, okay. do you have a wrong? So, so your time is up. She just gave me her two minutes. It's by person. In the past, we've been able to pass our minutes. Right. So. Um, is it two minutes or three minutes? It's three minutes, and just kind of. I don't want to get into this with everybody, but let's just move okay. on. Okay. Now I'm going to make my final comment here. And one of the uh, people, I've got some others, which I'll uh, respect your wish, but listen to mine. When I was gathering uh, signatures out there, one lady said to me, God, there's so much tension in this neighborhood. And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, well, there's all this issue with the naming of the district, the Dixie School District going on. I said, all right, I, I didn't really I feel tension on that. I'm not done yet. And then well, she said, finish up, will you? Be quiet, or you know, that's rude. That's not not okay. And so what she said is, there's also tension over this building. And I said, really? And come to think of it, it's stuff like this when you don't let people express their views on this. It's becoming a competitive situation where somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. So it'd be, it'd right be really to good we if we could. Like to have a conversation that's not being It like would be really good if we could have. Can I finish, Steve? It would be really good okay. if we could get to a collaborative point where maybe everybody could so work together. We have, and I don't want to have to sort of for it, but well, thank you for your comments. Are there any other public comments for items not on the agenda? I think your system is bad. Okay. The United and States Senate system. lets senators pass minutes on it. Why well, want them to ring my horse? I, I acknowledge Linda. Okay, thank yeah. you. This thank is you. kind of an in addition to what I was talking about earlier about oh, not getting any you. bills from Mr. Hansel, the architect, when he was first hired, the um, the cost was that his estimate, the district manager's estimate, somebody's estimate, and it's been in some of these um, minutes and meetings and things, the estimate was $12,000, and the district manager said in February board meeting, the $12,000 estimate from the architect is a fair cost and all-encompassing for initial schematic design, preparation and submission of the site plan review and application, create, uh, also creating construction plans and bidding documents, and also construction oversight. Now, I believe that this is going to cost a heck of a lot more than $12,000. So I think you guys are not being transparent. Even though you say you are, you're not being accountable to the taxpayers. Even though it's for Measure A, you say it's for Measure A, that's taxpayer money. And I would like to know why, and I know you're not going to answer, but I, my question is, why isn't anybody on the board or the district manager concerned about all of the hours and hours and hours and hours in the last almost five months that have been and should be billable have not been billed to us because it's way, way, way over the $12,000 estimate. And I would assume, and I know assuming is not a good word to use, but I would assume that Mr. Hansel's costs to date are probably more than $30,000. So I think the board should really listen to their conscience, be accountable. You're going way, way overboard with Hansel's money. I mean, the money we're giving to Hansel. You're, you're not 
even trying to contain any cost. You're just, you have an open end um, contract with this guy. It's open ended. Whatever he does, he does. And whenever we get a bill, we get a bill. And who knows how much we're being billed. So please think about this and just understand that you're not doing the community justice by not taking care of the dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Collaborative. I will certainly add the my architect that I work with. You know, the billing was the I didn't ask for any answers. I mean, yeah, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing to that to me about it. oftentimes professional services Just, like that are not billed in a way that you might want or expect, right? But it's a different setup. So we need bills. Thank you for the comment. Okay, moving on to item G. Any other public comments? Sorry. Yes. Yeah, uh, so this is about uh, process and uh, uh, about recognizing the public. Um, there were several comments uh, two months ago. Isabella uh, mentioned that she doesn't trust comments from the public. She trusts uh, more tr trust the experts that she hired, recognizing basically completely dismissing legitimate issues of law that are. Uh, unassailable and that you're going to find that you, you have to reckon with. Uh, last month, Jeff Naylor said he wasn't going to listen to petitions because after all they're biased. And then we get uh, later on that the uh, Park and Rec Commission says we've done adequate out outreach to everybody. We think we've taken uh, everything uh, from the public where we've never actually had a, a true dialogue. So I'd like to give you the names of the people that object to what you're doing, and that this is only half of them. Stephen Nessel, me, Donna McLaren, Patty Boro, Mary Patricia uh, Lincoln Hoff, Rich Burke, Judy Shriedman, Britta P Painter, uh, Joshua Martinez, Svetlana and no, Elokina, uh, Patrick Farr, Sue Rostoni, Deborah Cele Celebratary, uh, Jessica Becker, Carolyn Leonard, Ernest Gomez, Elizabeth Geller, Christina Lenock, Sigrid Painter, Bill McNicholas, Isabel Dow, De Dennis uh, Diero, John Barrow, uh, 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 Aksha S. S respect, people. Um, Roy Gulick, Eric Heller, Jared no Note, uh, Alan Losh, Dan Martino, Joseph uh, Wieshar, uh, Veronica Vosinin, Avazin, Vosinin, I can't pronounce your name, Mark, Mark Green, uh, Monica Lowe, Brett, uh, Brenda Choi, Wes uh, Rosenthi, Katja uh, Segev, uh, David Phillips, Dory uh, Rosenberg, Matt Adams, Jeff Stewart, Veronica, uh, uh, Victoria Smirnoff, Sean Keenan, Lisa Manning, Jen, John Vanassini, uh, Gabby Colas, uh, Shay, Shay Lee, uh, Anna Maria Bonanno, uh, Sally Corn Hosser, Bill Shay, which he tells me he's actually not in favor. I, I don't know. I think he's he just put his name on that. Uh, Elena uh, Grinko, uh, Lisa Longnecker, Rick Hortovich, uh, Maria Fernandez, Lasha Wells, Richard McConnell, Mary. Uh, Francesco, Francesco Giannade, Karen uh, Di Napoli. Uh, All right, Stephen, three minutes, so thank you. Well, now, I haven't actually gone through everybody, okay, and you're you are now, see, you're basically proving the point yeah. that you're not uh, willing to listen to the public, even though that you claim that you're representing the public. Everybody this is an outrage, everybody an outrage, and your names are on yeah. all of this. We got it. They're, it's obvious Thank by their you. actions. Okay, any other public comments for items not on the agenda? Um, I just wanted to comment on the closing arguments of the board uh, last meeting just for the benefit of, of Leah and, and Bill. And I just wanted to quote Jeff Naylor. Uh, and I quote, I, I also wanted to say that it is very difficult for me to put any weight at all on what I would call a subjective gathering of signatures by people who are opposed to a project. I guess my, my only comment, my, my initial response to that was disappointment in the sense of, you know, uh, 
I've, I've only lived here for two months now, but I've gotten to know John, who has spent most of the time gathering signatures, and I uh, gathered a significant amount of the signatures too. Um, and, and hearing a comment from Jeff, it, it, I wish he was here today to, to kind of respond for himself, but I just wanted to kind of put that out there of it being disturbing from a perspective of anything that is a dissenting opinion, we will disregard and we will accept things that are aligned with our existing beliefs. And I just want to put that out there and, and I think this is my fourth meeting now asking how decisions are made and hearing that is not something as a community member that I would love to hear in terms of um, from, a, from a community leader and, and ideally going forward understanding what does a petition look like that actually deserves the attention as we didn't receive any comments or questions or clarifications from the board regarding the 200 signatures that we received. So, thank you. Make sure that's put in the, the meeting notes so that question can be answered back. Can that be put in there? Oh. So that's not, I, I mean, I would invite you to contact um, Eric, okay. the district manager, to meet because this this issue has been going on for years. So I, if you're new to the community. It was just more about, like, it was a specific board comment about how petitions are. Right, right. but I would just invite you to, to speak with anybody offline okay. about any of this. So thank you. Uh, <coughs> any other comments from the public on non agenda items? All right, let's move on to item G, district matters. Uh, G1, amendment considerations to existing financial reserves policy regarding capital reserves and OPEC plus contributions. So this is a discussion matter. Who wants to, do you want to share? Yeah. Yeah. So this came up at the uh, last meeting through the two different presentations. It came up most notably through the uh, actuary who provided the OPEB study and report. Uh, there are a couple of uh, fairly ambiguous, uh, not clear items within the reserves policy that I included a copy of. One has to do specifically with uh, placement of capital reserves, the other has to do with setting a minimum annual contribution amount towards our OPEB trust. Um, so I gave you a pretty detailed memo in there and a couple of options on the capital reserves as well as uh, a recommendation towards the, uh, the language for the OPEB trust, whatever comes out of discussion tonight. Uh, will be drafted and then presented uh, as part of an amended policy for the next meeting. So there's no action here. Okay. Do you, does anybody have comments? I have a question. Um, I have a question. Are you looking for um, a policy level commitment for um, contributions to our capital reserve? Um, Account or fund, whatever this may be. Are you basically looking? I understand that the um, question for specific amount is related to the OPEP, Correct. but is it also about capital reserves? I am not personally looking for capital reserves, but we have allocated within the budget for last fiscal year and this fiscal year an amount of $100,000, yeah. um, but we don't actually state what happens or where that $100,000 is held and or kept. And then from there, what it is designated specifically to be used towards. Is it going to be capital reserves? Is it operating reserves that includes capital? So it's a larger picture. Um, but as it currently stands, we do not have a bona fide reserves account yet. We have allocated towards it. But a specific number is not necessary. Correct. Okay. Uh, that, would, that would come out of an annual budgeting process. So um, I think it would be great in conjunction with this discussion to have um, some kind of um, projected capital outlay schedule based on the useful life of our um, district capital assets. Yeah, we have that. Um, because as we um, um, see what's incoming in terms of capital outlays, um, we could kind of see what the numbers are going to be down the line. Um, but I personally am certainly in favor of um, a separate interest-bearing account um, with you know annual deposits towards the capital reserves, um, and um, it's, it's great that we would be able to um, maintain some kind of 
flexibility as to the amount that specifically gets allocated every year um, based on district performance any given year. On the other hand, the OPEP liabilities, um, um, I would recommend uh, committing via policy um, to a $60,000 level with potential additional funding as budget allows um, at the discretion of the board. That's yeah. my five cents. Okay. So we're, we're saying the 60000 for the OPEB would be a minimum. Correct. Yeah. And right now we're going to contribute 100000 Correct. For this year. Okay. I like that. And then the uh, capital reserves, I, I think it should be separated out of the regular operating budget and put into a uh, 100000 interest bearing. You're going to get, what, a couple hundred bucks? whatever, uh, it really doesn't make any difference as long as we segregate it. I'm good with that. So you'll be either way, whether it's a I don't separate care. account or account, you don't have credit. Yeah, I think it should be in a separate account, listed on the balance sheet that way. It's a lot easier. Yeah. Makes sense. Sure. I concur with the idea of a separate account. And uh, also that any numbers we have here be a minimum, hoping that we can, based on our position at, at the right time of the year, to add to it. Makes sense. Anything else from the board on this? I, I did uh, receive communication <coughs> from Director Naylor, <coughs> where he says, in my opinion, uh, should adopt the following, establish a minimum annual deposit of 100000 towards the trust, um, as well as in terms of capital reserves. Um, wanted uh, just clarifications on the separate account from the county in the event that we do go back into a need for a dry period loan, as well as uh, he brought up the notion of it uh, Words, you know, I'm trying to read here, into a separate investment interest bearing account to defray capital expenses uh, or unforeseen other obligations. Mm -hmm. uh, and he suggested that be a, a 100000 annually as well. Okay. I love that we're getting like Jeff beamed in. This is great. Thank you. Um, okay. Opening up to the public questions, comments on um, item G1. Yeah. Yes, um, who's this guy? What's your name? Ron Marano. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would just request that uh, the research and recommendations be put on the next fire commission uh, meeting, which uh, will come up later. Who knows I, when it will be. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think the fire commissioner would like to uh, see the report and the research and the recommendation. Okay. Thank you. Good point. Thank you. Anything else from the public? Stephen? Yeah, capital reserves means capital, and uh, operating expenses means operating. I'm, I'm a little concerned that you're kind of mixing the definitions. Um, we have big capital needs expense, and of course we should have enough reserves to, to uh, put us through dry periods or, or low periods in the, the annual budget. Um, so I guess what I'm saying is, yes, let's do 100000 to the capital, but also make sure that our uh, management practice is to have, not to, you know, play it too close to the bone, but to have enough so uh, the fall time when it, these things usually are, happens, um, that we don't need to uh, get short-term loans. It's just good business practice. All right, thank you. Anything else from the public? Okay. Um, anything else from the board? And we don't actually, this is just a discussion. So in terms of recommendations for something for next month, do you have what you need or it sounds like the consensus is looking at a $60,000 minimum OPAD deposit annually uh, that can obviously be increased. And again, I'm taking this from what the actuarial uh, state is because it absolutely, if you have a stated minimum, it absolutely affects his actuarial reports. 
uh, which we do not. Ours is very ambiguous. And then uh, I, I do think that this is going to need some more flushing out in terms of other reserves. Uh, also, where will these be held, so on and so forth. And then that all needs to go into clear policy. So I think we have enough for a draft. I don't think you're going to have enough to bring it back and approve it at the next meeting. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, item G2, dissolve temporary committee form to address emergency services succession of research recommendations. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, discussion. We're done, I believe, aren't we? I think so. That's it. Yeah. Opening up to the public, any comments on item G2? <coughs> Dissolving it? <laughs> Good idea. All right. So bringing it back to the board, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion carries unanimous. Item G3, district manager's report. Back to you, Eric. Uh, okay, um, obviously we've had some uh, transitions. Paula has uh, left, the chief is uh, well on his way out the door as quickly as he can. I get the feeling some days, but that's a different uh, conversation. Uh, so uh, the good news is, uh, as has been informed, Carolyn has moved into Paula's role as the senior administrative assistant effective this week. I'm trying to uh, listen. Come on. And then, uh, and then, I have extended a qualifying offer to somebody to fill in the administrative assistant position. Uh, I'm actually very excited about this person. I think they're going to fill the role uh, very well and fit in with the office very well. That person is stated to start on October 22nd. Uh, there was some interesting information that came out of the last LAFCO agenda. It's been a topic of this board for a while, um, but it appears that they may very well be appointing at their meeting on October 11th, the permanent uh, executive officer position and also outsourcing the work of the municipal service review report. Um, at this point, is about seven years past due on their end, um, which will, for us, include the Santa Fe area, which we are a part. Um, and I am also assuming uh, that's going to play a large role in some of the other conversations that have been happening around fire. Um, I think I put this in here. Um, Relatedly, it was interesting that they are uh, within this packet where I read that they are actually looking at taking on a potential future study for fire service across the county, much as they did for fire for sewer uh, uh, service and provisions across the county as well, and looking at all the various districts. So I'll be curious to see what comes out of that. Um, and then uh, all notices have gone out in terms of upcoming commission appointment opportunities for both commissions. All right. Thank you. Is there uh, questions, comments from the board? Questions, comments from the public? Stephen? So uh, Carolyn uh, moved into Paula's position. I assume that's a different case structure, uh, an increase in, in uh, in salary, yeah. The it moves into that approved pay schedule, yeah. Okay, so it's it's okay. So is she starting at the same rate that Paul was at, or no? No, she is not starting at he the same responsible, responsible person to answer. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Carolyn's currently doing two jobs of being compensated for one. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. If she's doing two jobs, why don't you give her extra pay? I didn't ask for it. Right. So moving on. Yeah, moving on. Um, Excuse me. Are we still in the district manager report? Yes. Thank you. I have a question. Okay. Um, the commission appointments, I would like to know of the three regular available commission appointments for fire commission, who are the three people that are, whose times are up? It's Russ Albano, Dan Curran, and Tom Ellsbury. I'm sorry. Russ Albano, Dan Curran, and Tom Ellsbury. 
Okay, thank you. And then um, the two regular and the one alternate available and the one one-year term available for the Park and Rec Commission, who are those? Jones. John, uh, John Toon, John Parkinson, and then the alternate position, which is Kathy Joseph. And then there'll be another one-year term because the commissioner is moving on to the board. The one you, oh, that one, okay. Thank you. <coughs> Anything else on district on the district manager report? Okay, moving on to item H, fire department matters. Item one, agreement between the County of Marin and Marinwood Community Services District for fire protection and emer emergency services to CSA 13. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? Right, any questions, comments from the public? Ron? Yes, uh, CSA 13 uh, questions the uh, agreement you reached with San Rafael for paying for chief officer services. It seems to us that uh, San Rafael should be providing those services at no charge rather than charging us $100,000 since we are providing basically no charge services east of the freeway and also to Mont Marin at no charge in the city of San Rafael. And they have saved over a million and a half dollars a year by closing their station three on Joseph Court. CSA 13? Yes. Can you ask, can you tell me which number we're on right now? I am H1. I know you're in fire department matters. One. One. Oh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. okay. Just for Ron's information, I think we're going to be hitting this subject in item H5 shortly. Which is now item H6? H6. Well, depending on that. There's yeah. more to come. It depends. It could be under several, but I, I, I take your comment. Thank you. Um, all right. Hearing nothing else from the public, let's bring back the board and call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion on carries unanimously. Moving down to item H2, agreement between the County of Marin and Marinwood Community Services District for fire protection and emer emergency services at the juvenile hall site. Do I have a motion? So Second. Okay, any discussion? All right. Questions, comments from the public? Hearing none, back to the board. I'll call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion carries <coughs> unanimously. Moving down to item H3. Update on agreement for fire chief officer services provided by the city of San Rafael and considerations of future board meeting materials to be regularly provided and included in meeting agenda packets. So this is a discussion item. Yeah, I put a memo in here and I would also uh, invite Chief Roach to comment with anything else that he had from this as well. Um, and we'll just kind of carry the first part first. Uh, I believe as everybody's aware, both agencies have approved the agreement uh, and both agencies have noticed their respective labor groups uh, to engage in a potential meet and confer over any negotiable impacts. Um, once that process is completed, uh, it would be time that it could be executed. Uh, I believe everybody still anticipates and it's hopeful for a November 1st effective date. Um, in the meantime, we have been meeting and communicating regularly with the, the chief staff from the city of San Rafael. Uh, most recently, uh, at least one that I was involved in, Chief Roach and myself met with Chief Gray, Deputy Chief Senate, and the entire team of battalion chiefs. Um, I walked out of that continuing to feel good about the arrangement. Uh, I, from an operational standpoint, I think they're going to uh, do a fine job. Everybody seemed very positive, enthusiastic, uh, uh, willing to tackle whatever obstacles we may uh, face that are yet to be foreseen. Uh, I, which I expect there to be some bumps along the road with the transition, such like this. Um, but otherwise, my report on Center Fell has been very good. One of the things that came out of the, some of those meetings were just questions about um, 
their participation in future board meetings, what types of things to be prepared by them to report on, uh, you know, the chief currently has been doing his chief report as well as his uh, monthly activity summary. Obviously, Chief Gray and his uh, reports are not foreign to governing bodies. He, they have several of them over there as well, so I anticipate he's going to have some ideas, but I would appreciate some level of direction that I can start to wrap my head around and help share with them in terms of what would the board like to see on you know those regular monthly documents. Obviously, transition updates, things like that will happen in the forefront, but what are those kind of standard inclusions? Chris has some great people working for him. I mean, there's 10 people who are all much smarter than me that are going to be doing the work that I've been doing. So I think plus all the people working for him. What's that? Plus, yeah. So um, keep an open mind. And I think it, pretty simply you could figure this out. Leah, Eric, and Chief Gray sitting down in an afternoon and kind of talking about some of the reporting abilities that he has coming from his department and how that might meet this board's needs. And then, of course, it can be tweaked over time. So, you know, you feel like you're getting answers to questions you have. Great. Right. So I'll open up to the board um, and we can go down the line and that's okay with everyone with discussion, if you have anything to discuss. Well, yeah. one of the things that I've found very interesting, and I was disappointed we didn't get it this month, is the emergency call matrix that you achieved. We had one last month, but not nothing this month, just the total number of calls. We typically just give that to the fire commission and if I have a, if the work done through the commission report, I'll include it in the board packet. Commission didn't meet this month. Well, anyway, I would have appreciated the report. Uh, but I think you should add one more line item. And maybe this is moot at this point. <laughs> it's like, talking long well, well, <laughs> well, the one piece that is missing is the number of calls that San Rafael provides back this direction. And Good. I think it would be helpful. I'll explain later when we get to whether it be item five or six, depending on how you're looking at it. All right, thank you. Yeah. That was one of the things that every fire commission meeting that we go through pretty regularly. And with 116, that's a little higher than the last month, I think. It's typically anywhere from 95 to 120. Yeah. So that, I mean, that's up there. and then. We know that at least 50% is on the other side of the calls. We'd love to see that continue. Yeah. Um, I would appreciate seeing... Um, it's to Eric. <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, seeing the the calls we go to, um, we are called on the JPAs, various JPAs, and also some of coming in here. Um, also, the type of calls, medical versus fire, and I would like to um, have a report from the chief um, of San Rafael or the battalion chiefs on what. Um, activities were performed for the district. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll open up to the public. Any public comments, questions on item H2? David? Yes. Um, so, uh, well, it's interesting, this agreement. Um, there is actually one concern, and that is it doesn't seem, you know, where does the buck stop here? We, we're, we're saying fire chief or designated uh, chief officer. So if something falls apart or doesn't get met, met you know, who, who is accountable? I, I think the, I don't like this agreement because it's just saying, well, we're going to cover all this stuff, but we don't really have a, a, a go-to line of accountability. I think that's essential. Um, uh, for us to get our value of this agreement. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so is that, that kind of close it out? Yeah, one more, else? I'll just add that I am meeting with Chief Brand, Chief Senate tomorrow to go over all the prevention activities within Redwood and CSA 13 and um, explain
explained how things have been done here and how you should transition that to San Rafael. Uh, Jason Hatfield, the battalion chief training officer, has had multiple meetings with Ryan Brack and our training officer to talk about how those two will blend and work together to um, coordinate the training, the training opportunities. And the battalion chiefs are coming by on their ships every day, spending time with our crews just to listen to their needs and hear how maybe they can help facilitate the transition. So Sarah operationally has been very receptive um, to working with us. All right, good to, good to hear. Thank you. So moving on to item H4, request for brief hiatus of fire commission meetings. So this is the second memo and it's an action item to approve. Yeah, in there, um, so it kind of talking this through and as we're going through it and recognizing that we have a appointment processes and everything else going on. I mean, obviously, uh, the chief won't be around for the November meeting. We're hopeful that this happens in time for November, and even if it does, uh, I would much rather spend their time focusing on <coughs> getting everything, getting the train out of the station, so to speak, uh, and on the matters at hand. Um, at, a, at an earliest, I would suggest potentially the December meeting is when it starts up again. Um, however, I also envision that first meeting being uh, much like kind of some of the exercise that we just went through where the commission can have a chance to provide some feedback to the chiefs in terms of what they want to get uh, out of their commission meetings, what types of reports, information, documentation that they would like to see. Um, obviously, those meetings are a little less formal. Um, just in the terms of some of the conversation between staff and uh, and the commissioners, it would uh, probably make more sense, in my opinion, to wait until the new commissions are appointed. We know who's seated and allow that newly formed group to have that conversation because uh, new people coming in might want different information than the people who are no longer there. Um, that would be my recommendation. Personally, I would hold off until after terms have been set, but I would certainly hold off until December at the earliest. I, I think the three who are up for election will not be seeking reappointment, Russ, Tom, and Dan, which is unfortunate because they have a wealth of knowledge, but um, you know, I think they're looking to move on from the fire commission, so you'll be looking for new members. And it's also a topic of the conversation Eric and I had at the meeting with the Senate Fell Chief the other day is possible ways to blend the fire commissions, whether they meet at the same time, um, you can't actually have Ringwood or Lucas Valley residents on the Santa Rafael Fire Commission. That doesn't work because of uh, how their charter is set up. You have to be a Santa Rafael resident. Um, but it's not to say they can't meet at the same time. Um, but again, these are all things that I think over the next few months is part of the transition and figuring out what works best. All right. Um, do I have a motion? Yeah. For the brief hiatus of fire commission meetings. So moved. To so win. You're saying until January? 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so first Tuesday. I, I would say until the first meeting after the uh, commission is set. There probably won't be a January meeting because the first Tuesday of January is January 1st. New Year's Day. So that would probably be February, which would allow a lot of time for staff to work directly together, um, you know, both myself and them, as well as our firefighters and them, and allow them to focus on the matter at hand, which is getting up to speed in their role as chief officer as quickly and efficiently as possible. Is there a request from you or from the commission? From me. We didn't have an October uh, commission meeting by which to freeze this pass up. So, okay, so I have a motion that you're not done with it. Motion to. Uh, the hiatus for the fire commission to approve that until the first Tuesday of February 2019.
Yeah, that's good. Is there a second? I'll second that. Uh, all right, discussion. I'm on the floor. I can start. Um, so, where does I understand how it would add another layer of confusion to this already tricky process on um, your part, given that you checked out already? <laughs> I did not check out already, Isabel. I take offense to that. My, don't let my parents fool you. I'm showing up every day getting stuff done. But you didn't want him to address you. Either. Don't address me with things that are going to happen in November. You need to speak with him about that. So, um, given that there will be no chief or a new chief, um, and you will have your hands full, I don't think it prevents the fire commission to um, from getting some things done. And we do have two members on the commission that are residents of Upper Lucas Valley, which is a firewise community. And I think we should take advantage of their presence there and learn from them. And hopefully work on a plan for Marinwood to become a firewise community. Um, there is some work to be done, and I'm sure somebody um, could take a leadership and, and try to implement it in Marinwood. I would hope that somebody on Fire Commission could do that. Um, another item um, that could be worked on is to develop a <coughs> financial and communication plan for uh, Clipper Days in Marinwood. That's something that has been happening on a haphazard kind of why it's communicated on next door, but I think if we had more predictable schedule and communication was um, in place to inform residents, um, we would be helping um, in fire prevention, in my opinion, again. Um, that's why I think that the commission could meet without you present and still get some work done. Bill, any questions, comments, or comments? Uh, I mean, with three members leaving, they're not going to... One stick it around. Yeah, we don't know that. Yeah. Uh, I would think it's safe to assume, uh, given recent events with Dan Curran, that he is not going to be uh, applying but, uh, until November. Third, I think is the deadline that I put on there, uh, comes and goes. Um, it's fairly assumptive, yet fairly uh, confident that I believe one of those two definitely will, and one of those two probably will reapply. Russell, John. Uh, I think Russell will, uh, will walk. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what would be on the agenda for the next uh, fire commission meeting. Last meeting we had was September. September. Yeah. Well, again, this would be something I would sit down with Chief Gray and his team with as well. Uh, I mean, they certainly have a fire commission there, and he has some uh, enough thoughts and ideas, and we have some of our regular things that kind of go through it. But I'll just brought up a couple good points uh, in terms of the uh, opportunity to. For the commission to take on a firewise uh, role, um, as well as uh, the further exploring the chipper days that have happened. Uh, I'm concerned with making a hiatus of it as long as we're suggesting or in the motion. <coughs> Excuse me? Because <coughs> I think it. Make it the impression to the commissioners, and I want to hear from Ron. I hope he has something to say on this. But he, it may give the impression that we really don't need or care about them much. <coughs> that we can let them take a four-month break. Um, I would. I think no meeting in November is logical based on where things are. It appears we don't have a date for meeting in January. 
So it seems like a December meeting might still be worthwhile to get some input in and work done. All right. Um, anything else from the board? <coughs> Uh, yeah, I know that uh, Damon and uh, Chief Gray are going to speak on November 7th about uh, fire issues. Um, and it, it seems to me after tonight, it's going to work and get out to the community that basically uh, Marinwood Fire Department is being merged or taken over by San Rafael, whether, you know, the accuracy of that. There'll be rumors. Um, and I think uh, the uh, commissioners can be instrumental in uh, assisting the, this change. I think this is exactly the wrong time to take a break, that uh, this is a time to engage with the public. Um, so if they're willing to do that, uh, they can provide comfort to the community and uh, assist with Chief Craig and Dane Crowley uh, during this transition phase. Um, I just want to tell you that I've been going to Marinwood Fire Commission meetings for almost five years and I've been going to the San Rafael Fire Commission meetings for four years. So I'm pretty familiar with how they're run and I want to say that the San Rafael Fire Commission meetings are run much more casually and they have a different makeup of commissioners. Hardly any of the commissioners are ex-firefighters. You know, they've got like an attorney, they've got a realtor, they've got um, a member of San Rafael, um, I don't know, one of the departments. They, they've got all different types of people. It's a really well-rounded group of people. And they have different things to concentrate on, like the Fire Foundation, San Rafael Fire Foundation, <coughs> which uh, collects money, t tries to get donations specifically to help out with the fire department expenses. But um, the other thing is that, okay, here we meet the second Tuesday of the month at seven o'clock at night. In San Rafael, they meet the first Wednesday of the month at 4 p.m. And I think it would be very difficult, in my opinion, because I've seen the professional people that are in the fire commission in both areas and most of them in, actually I think all of them in San Rafael are still working. But in any case, um, maybe you guys ought to go, or someone, oh, Bill, maybe Bill should go <coughs> starting tomorrow just to check out the San Rafael Fire Commission meeting, just to kind of get an idea of what they're like, so that you might help us out with the with a Marinwood Fire Commission meeting to talk about it. I think that would be great. It's 4 o'clock tomorrow, and I can not tell you where it is. <laughs> You're not going to go? Not tomorrow. Okay. Thank okay. you. Ron, did you have your hand up? Yes, I just wanted to be sure that during the hiatus, uh, the members of the Marinwood Fire Commission uh, will still be getting their per diem payments every month. Uh, Oh, Ron. I wish, right? Um, okay, any other comments from the public? Uh, all right, I'm going to bring it back up here. Um, I'm going to say my two cents. I think it makes sense to have a brief hiatus and hearing the comments from the other board members, I'm wondering if perhaps we think of amending it to be a hiatus until uh, January and change the date of the January commission meeting because while I agree with the point of December we wouldn't have the new commissioners so you'd have a bunch of people who are it, you know it was, and, and plus then you add in the holidays in December I think it's just kind of shot so I like the idea of having a meeting sooner rather than later I feel like unfortunately the calendar is what it is so I would suggest amending the uh, the motion to bounce it back to January. Because um, yeah, I'd like some time to sort of flush out what, what all the changes are and also hear back from San Rafael and to gather feedback from all the interested parties about 
what the commission looks like, what what they're working on, what they're looking at, and, and how also the board functions into that as well. So I mean, I think it's a, more of a conversation to have. Sounds good. Would you like to amend your motion? Uh, amend it to uh, January 2nd, Wednesday. Would that, would that fit? I think when you change the dates. We have to check our calendar internally just okay. to make sure the room is available. Well, and also checking the calendars and availability of the people that are actually on the commission. Because yeah. you know, they commit to that regular meeting date and time. So to just say, hey, you guys are going to meet on this different date and time on this one. Um, I, I would rather try to find a date when the, as many as possible, if not all, are actually available. Just kind of standard. What would happen if the motion were to be amended to say that we're not going to have a commission meeting in either November or December, but every attempt will be made based on availability of a room and availability of the commissioners to have a January meeting? <laughs> That was well said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you need to withdraw your motion? Yes. yes. Okay. Withdraw. Withdraw. Okay, so uh, then we need a second. Does anyone a second, second? my motion? A second nervous motion. Second. Okay. Um, since we have a new motion, I will just be precautionary and open it up to the public. Any comments from the public? Hearing none, come back and call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. So now we are going to, we switched around item five and six at the beginning. So we're going to start with six. Item H6, fire activity summary and chief report. Uh, just real quick, I'll tell you, September was very busy with the calls. Um, even with the recent rain, we continue to be in the middle of fire season. Um, there's been a number of vegetation management projects and chipper days that have gone on in our community for the last month or so. Oh, and also we're kind of putting a firefighter list and hopefully a new hire at the end of the month. Okay. Right. I, I have some questions on, on Chief, on the, on the volunteer staffing. Um, you, I'm wondering, there's a battalion chief, one battalion chief and one AO. Do they live in the district, both of them? Or do they work in the district? No. Okay, how about the seven other responders? And you know, I don't, I would say very few of them live actually in Marinwood or CSA 13 at this okay. point. And what what do these responders respond to? They don't, we, it's, the program's kind of changed over the years and we asked them to do actual ride along time as opposed, previously they would respond, if there was a, a call, they would respond back to the station to staff the reserve engine to be available to the community. Well, you just can't get a captain, an engineer, and a firefighter to respond during the day back to the station to staff a reserve engine. So the value is now seen with them being required to ride along as a fourth or fifth person with the on-duty engine company. What they do depends on their level of training and the comfortability that on-duty captain has with the, them as an actual responder or non-responder. Sometimes they just clean the firehouse. Sometimes they run errands in the utility. Sometimes if they've been around for a while and are firefighter one EMTs, they look as a fourth person on the engine, you know, working on the medical aids or extending a hose line in the fire. Thank you. Any other questions? What's going to happen when Brad goes on the 25th? That's something I'm working on for the replacement. That's why I'm putting this list together. So hopefully there'll be a new hire and to as the night firefighter. Other questions and comments from the board? Questions and comments from the public? Well, what the number are we on? <laughs> we're on H. H6. Well, I know we're on H, but H6. H6. But it got switched to 5, I think, before you got here. Yeah, we reversed 5 and 6. Oh, so it's going to be 6, then 5. Yes. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. what I didn't hear. Okay, good. Okay. Anything else on item H5? 6. I'm sorry, six. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Yeah, H6. What were we just talking about? We're in the fire activity summary. And six. Yes. Thank you. I do have a question about the pre-position strike team assignments on red flag days. We had some of those, or we had one or two pre-position strike teams? Marin County did as a whole. 
But Marinwa did not participate? We, we, during one of the assignments, we did participate with an engine. And during a second call for a prepositioning strike team assignment, we did not because we didn't have personnel available. But that prepositioning is for counties as a whole. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So it looks like we can move on to item or move backwards. Item H five: Review of sh current shared services agreement with San Rafael. Irv, I'm going to hand this over to you. Thank you. Uh, I have a number of comments, and I even have some handouts for the board. Uh, but Rinwood added a third firefighter that was to be paid for by the city of San Rafael. Uh, and our arrangement as part of that was that we would provide first response uh, to portions of San Rafael. And when the city's funding stopped, we absorbed that third firefighter without any further compensation from the city. When you look at the emergency responses for the first half of 2018, and that's my first handout. Here's. I just have enough for the board and for error if that was all that my budget allowed. Uh, <laughs> but when you look at that, it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, calls to, to San Rafael in the first response area was 49.9% of our total calls. But when you add in the mutual aid calls to other areas outside of our re first response area, it becomes 57% of our total calls. If you're generous and deduct back the calls that they came into Marinwood, that's why I was asking for that line item, it goes down to 55%. And in both 2015 and 2016, we were at 55% for the total calls to San Rafael, not the net. So obviously, we're spending more of our time and effort and energy, and I suppose money, uh, in San Rafael than we are in Rinwood and CSA 13 and the county farm put together. And I thank the chief for getting me these statistics. Now, uh, do you have this printed out so we could go along with you? To I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't get enough copies, but Eric Here. has them. Is that the same? They're sounds, all the same. Sounds kind of unreasonable to me. Well, I didn't say it was reasonable, I just said it was No, no, factual. I didn't mean unreasonable. <laughs> I meant um, I don't know where the statistics came from, and oh, they, so I'm questioning. Oh, they came from the fire chief. But who interpreted them? There wasn't any interpretation. So I, I just took the numbers. I don't want to get back and forth right now. Okay. Can we? If, uh, before I go, do you have more different handouts? The other one was something that I think everyone, I don't, well, yeah, let, let me just give this to you. It's a copy of something that we had in our package, I think, a month ago. Okay. In any event, the other, the other handout that he's going for is this benefit, the value benefit analysis for current shared services agreement that the chief and or Eric put together, I think, last month. And it lists one, two, three, four, five, six items of benefit we get from the San Rafael Agreement. Uh, the first one is 9-11 dispatch service, which has been estimated at $50,000. Fuel and gasoline, $15,000. Records management, $3,000. Incident command, this is an interesting one, $60,000 incident command. It's uh, actually probably more than that. Okay, but that, well, that's even worse. Let me keep going. Paramedic incentive was $33,000, except they're collecting the paramedic fee and we aren't getting any of that. Hopefully we will eventually. And paramedic equipment and supplies, $12,500, which we aren't getting. They're just taking that money from our taxpayers uh, until we get a paramedic program. The total value, one hundred and seventy-three five. dollars well, there's, there's some things that were left off of that because there should, it should include things like truck companies and engine companies that we get in the event of an emergency. Well, I have, I'm, I'm going. Let me keep going. Okay. I, I hear you. I'm just trying to make a point. And, and so if you assume that we're spending about half of our energy and effort handling calls in San Rafael, 
then at least if this number is valid, it's only really half that number that the benefit Marinwood is getting. But when you, uh, you know, what is the cost of the third firefighter? It, it, it's probably uh, not, re you know, it, it's more than $86,000, I would have guessed, but I don't know. But then the second item, fuel and gasoline, $15,000. Why do we have budgeted $7,500 for fuel and gasoline in the fire department budget if we're getting that from San Rafael? We have other gasoline costs that we use. Well, why don't they pay for those costs? Uh, the fourth item is listed as $60,000. That's the incident command thing that the chief mentioned. He thinks is probably a low number. When you look, at, and we have in our board packages the old JPA and the modified one. When you look in the old JPA, paragraphs 2A, B, and C have chief officer responses to emergency calls. In appendix B of the new GPA, it's listed as item number two. Now we get to pay for it, <laughs> it seems like. So something's, the playing field isn't really even here yet. Uh, Aside from the total, I think, financial inequity of what's going on, uh, what really got me interested was our emergency calls to the Center called JPA is related to the coverage for our residents and uh, taxpayers of Marinwood and CSA 13. Uh, in the, your package, there's a map of the JPA. Well, it isn't of the JPA. It's the San Rafael response area. It doesn't limit us to east of the highway or Mont Marin and San Rafael Park. It includes the entire city of San Rafael and includes some unincorporated area outside of the city and outside of Marinwood and CSA 13. Uh, operationally, I guess, we're first out dispatched to the area east of the highway and the area immediately south here up to the top of the hill. But as noted in the uh, the response, emergency responses, the city uses us all over the city uh, as the need arises. But you, you have to understand too is that you're part of the fire protection system of that whole response area and every resource of the San Rafael Fire Department is available to Marinwood and CSA 13 also. I, I know that. But, it, but you're not placing any value on that. But that uh, ability was there way back when this whole thing started. Uh, I'm not even sure if it wasn't there before we had the JPA. I can't remember for some I feel like you have a point. What's your point? I, I'm almost there. <laughs> and you, and, and I, I'm sorry, but I, I have a number of different issues. I want to, okay. Uh, I was just, Chief, what is the, what is the, I'm sorry. I hate sorry. The, equi the equity argument gets us no I, I, well, let's, I, there was a, a suggestion made last month that I want us to, to follow through on. Isn't there sort of a rule of thumb as to the response, the maximum response time is successful? Well, it depends on the standard of cover that your organization has adopted. What, what, yeah, what? there's some recognized um, engine company response, paramedic response. You'd like an engine company to get there within four minutes. Um, you'd like a 15 person single alarm fire assignment to respond within 15 minutes. You'd like your paramedic ambulance to be there within nine. Okay. So if we take the, the, the your four minute thing, how long does it take to get out to Westgate, for instance? And these are I realize recommended the standards that you attempt to meet 80% of the time. I realize that. But I'm trying from to this fire station to get out to Westgate, it probably takes you three and a half minutes. Okay. And how about to go out to Contempo Marine where you had a fire? Event? It depends what side of Contempo you're on, but anywhere from three to six minutes. Okay. My point here is when we're over there in San Rafael taking care of that trailer fire, the Next engine to come to Marinwood, if we have a first aid call, is at station 56, if they're available and not at that trailer fire. They move and resources around, though, to put them in this area. When you lose all three engines to a fire in Contempo Marin, they move engines into northern San Rafael. One of that. those stations is Marinwood that gets covered. So. Right, but what, what if, if there's just a first aid call out in Contempo? There isn't a bunch of moving out engines. So we're re depending on the engine from Terra Linda. My point is that the response time to our taxpayers and residences, residents are, is, is probably double when we're over taking care of Santa Rafael's uh, first response area for Marinwood. 
Uh, I, I have to tell you, we're taking a very micro approach to this. There's a call in Terra Linda that X engine is coming from somewhere else. So I it's the same no matter where you are. But when we started this JPA, we had a volunteer fire department that covered the station when the alarm went out and that a second engine was manned within two or three minutes, if need be. And I can just off the top of my head remember at least two rather interesting medical aid calls and two rather interesting structure fire calls where I was the engineer, or I was the officer, on the second responding engine to the second call. My point is, taking this JPA responsibility has reduced the coverage to the folks in Marin and CSA. CSA 13. Uh, so, I, I, you know, here are the main issues. I'm getting to the point. One, the funding of the third firefighter appears to be, in me, appears to me to be pretty much unsustainable. Uh, two, we have materially reduced the actual coverage for our own residents and taxpayers with the current calls to San Rafael for the JPA. Uh, we have an inequitable financial agreement with San Rafael. And we have two very expensive, relatively new pieces of apparatus with only enough people to man one at a time. And I wonder what would have happened if we had gotten a utility vehicle. If the engine company is going to stay together, three guys or two, whatever, there's no one to cover that, to use that second engine. I propose that we take up Eric's suggestion in his September 6, 2018 email to the board, where in the fifth paragraph he suggests the equitability concerns be addressed by the board designating two members to meet with two San Rafael elected officials with the sole intention to discuss and address the broader topic of equitability in our working relationship with each other. Maybe San Rafael, and you know, looking at it, maybe we can get a little more out of San Rafael if we're going to do this. Uh, we have a, Chief says we have, we they only pay for part of our fuel and uh, gasoline. They also paid for, or did, perform some of our vehicle maintenance. We paid them for it. Maybe they ought to be absorbing that. There's other places, I think, that we could le level the playing field with. So I would hope the board would seriously consider uh, appointing two members to uh, meet with some folks from San Rafael and uh, try to find a, a solution that's much more favorable than what we have now. Thank you. Uh, other any discussion from the board? Opening it to the public. Ron? Yes, as uh, I remarked uh, earlier, as the Fire Commissioner for the County Service Area 13 and a member of, of the Renwood Fire Commission, it seems rather ironic to me that Marinwood has approved paying San Rafael basically $100,000 a year to provide a chief officer and have San Rafael the pleasure of having Marin Marinwood cover North San Rafael at no charge. In my mind, San Rafael should provide the chief officer to Marinwood at no charge since Irvin and I are probably the only ones in this room that uh, go back to the uh, original agreement with San Rafael, where they wanted us to take up the response area for Station 3. And they wanted Marinwood to increase its staffing from two per shift to three firefighters per shift. And they were going to pay for that $300,000 a year which they did until they ran into some financial difficulties. At that particular time, the Marinwood CSD board, in my mind, didn't have the guts to tell San Rafael to take a hike. We're going back to a two-person engine company since you're not going to pay for the third person. Take it or leave it. And I think we should present them with the same alternative now. We shouldn't be taxing your taxpayers or mine to provide fire protection for the city of San Rafael when we could have an automatic aid agreement with San Rafael and we have an automatic aid agreement with the Novato Fire Department. When we need help, we'll get it. 
and uh, there's no reason uh, our taxpayers should uh, subsidize the uh, San Rafael Fire Department. Thank you. Other comments from the public? I just have one little comment. It seems like every time we get into this talk about money and what happened five years ago, what happened six, seven, eight years ago, we keep looking back. People keep saying, oh, we should do this, we should do that, we had this, we had that. Why are we looking back? It seems to me that we should be looking in the present and in the future, not looking back. The time is today. The time is different than it was five or six or eight years ago. Okay, we don't get that extra money, big deal. We don't get it. Things change with San Rafael. Things change. Don't look back. Why do you keep looking back? It just makes you more angry. It makes you more upset. upset. It makes you think differently. And I honestly believe it's much better for Marinwood if we stop looking back to see what it was like before. Times are changed. Yeah, I just want to say, God bless grumpy old men. Uh, Irv <laughs> and Ron, thank you very much for what you're saying, because basically, it's, it's, it's true. We're getting hosed, if, to use the pun. Um, y you know, I, I said before, why pay for the cow if you get the milk for free? Well, we've been doing that uh, for San Rafael for far too long. And until the point when you're ready to take a, a tough position, as Ron is saying, we're still going to be on the, the short end of the stick. And that's, that's all there is to it. So um, uh, I, I, I really think, and I look at this, this agreement, and I, I see we're losing control. Um, they don't have accountability, yet they're able to, to uh, you know, determine things that will affect uh, we as taxpayers. I just think that if we want to do a merger, let's go ahead and do a merger. But uh, to, you know, pay them, this is kind of, this is a very, this agreement is not going to last, in my opinion. So um, I hope you guys, the grumpy old men, stay around for a while to, to help make this uh, a better uh, agreement. Thank you. Any other comments? I, just wanna, I know it's not supposed to be a back and forth, but I'm just trying to understand or kind of what you're saying on some of this stuff. So instead of, are you saying instead of going east of the freeway, we should provide less of a service to anybody to go to a two-person energy company? No, I'm saying that we should look at all of that and talk with the powers that be in San Rafael and look ahead as to where we can go. Maybe we'll look ahead, right? Not yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I did the back to bring us up to speed as to how we started and got into this and where we are. But I think that we, we, there's, nothing, there's nothing we can do about what's past. It's gone. We have to... Then why are you bringing it up so much? I mean, you're saying it's gone. Because, right. as Ron pointed out, there are probably no one else in the room except for Ron and I that have the background relative to how we got to where we got to. Right, any other comments from the public? I just wanted to agree with what Ron and Herb were saying in terms of responsibility and understanding from the board or whoever looks into it more, what does the score skirt look like you know, in the event that we don't sign the agreement or a, a bare minimum or what? additional investment or lack thereof that we would have to make uh, to make that happen. Thank you. Ron? Uh, just a, a quick comment. If you don't learn from the mistakes of the past, you're likely to make those same mistakes in the future. Okay. Thank you. Um, I want to make a suggestion to the board. If, do we want to appoint two people tonight from the board to work with San Rafael so we can kind of get this off of our agendas and kind of get it kind of to the people who can, the movers and shakers. I, I feel like maybe Jeff would be interested. You know, he's not here, so. Maybe we can make the final point the next month when everybody's here. Will everybody? Do we want to do it now? Do we want to wait?
weight, um, who's interested, who's not. I know we know Jeff is. I'm happy to do it. Um, what the feelings are. Why don't we agendize it for next month with the information we now have that you're interested, Jeff's interested, give everybody a chance to think about it. Okay. I'm going to make, make that agenda item for next month. Okay. So item. what exactly are you going to do? We're going to look at appointing two board members to work with the San Rafael City Council politically in terms of some of these equitability issues and the issues that have been raised. Um, it, to do that more at a political level. So I'm going to move on. So you're not signing anything. You're not agreeing to the contract. The contract was agreed to last month. The board approved that. The shared services, I mean, the, the chief operating contract last month, and San Rafael City Council is already. And they approved. signed it also. Right. So it is in effect now. No. No. Transitioning probably November first, our date. Hopefully. November okay. First. So actually. it's in effect now. I mean, whenever it's going to be in effect. So what you're trying to, what you're saying is you're going to try to bargain with San Rafael to either cut the costs or change the services or do something. We're going to have a conversation about these things because we can all complain in this forum and I don't think, I think ultimately that's actually going to hurt our relationship, our working relationship with San Rafael. I think these conversations are valid. I think there are points on all different sides, but to move it from this venue into a different venue with two board members and the corresponding people in the city of San Rafael to discuss these issues and then report back to the board. So, but we'll talk about it more next month when it's an agenda item, because right now we're... Okay, but is there anybody that thinks this is a good deal? Because I think we're getting a really good benefit for 100 grand a year. Okay, so we're not doing back and forth right now, we're just... I, okay, I'm sorry, but... I, any, we're any, not doing back and forth right now, Linda. We are... <laughs> right. No. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. Um, I would suggest that as the board president, you can certainly appoint two people. Um, I think it's safe to assume that Jeff would be willing to do it. I also think it's safe to assume that Irv's period on the board is rapidly coming to a close, and he'll only have one more month, which leaves the three of you as to who this would be. Um, I agree with the comment that you just made that while I think it's important discussion, I, I don't I don't know what that I see the benefit of this uh, continuing and continuing in a uh, public forum such as it is, especially when next month I think it is, uh, for me as the district manager, my focus is going to be on building a positive relationship with the city of San Rafael and their staff and moving forward with them as the chief officers and on a staffing level. I don't know that subjecting that them to further of this conversation in the next meeting. I think if you're going to make appointments, you can make them now. I think you could, again, you have the ability to make appointments uh, as the board president. Uh, if Jeff has strong objections to it, and you, should you choose to appoint him, he can request to be replaced. Um, but I would suggest moving forward with that rather than coming back to the next meeting so we can talk about it some more and then have another appointment, an actual appointment process. I do not believe you need to agendize it to appoint two board members to engage those conversations. There isn't an action item. There isn't action that those two board members will be responsible for. Um, and I think you are well within your rights as the board president and well within uh, other compliance actions too. Okay. Thank as a you. result of the conversation that just came up. Thank you. Or why don't you just cut $100,000 off of the Linda, stupid Linda. Eichler Park maintenance shed that'll pay for your You're first year. Right now. I know, but that's what you need so to do. Please. Stop spending so much money on Park and Rec. Okay. Do I, um, basically, so if we're taking her out of the front, no, I'm sorry, this is at the board right now. This is not for public comment. Um, do either one of you guys have any statements? Say again? Do either one, I'm putting everyone on the spot if I'm going to appoint two people and we have Jeff is interested or, and you're at the <coughs> running. Sorry. Your feelings, either one of you. I'll do it if you want. I 
don't feel I have enough understanding of, of Prime Department operations either. Am I probably as eloquent politically as others? So I will back down. If you're interested in sitting on this, I think you're welcome to publicly state that uh, and appoint yourself if there's no other objections. This feels weird. So I will ask the board um, to appoint Jeff and myself to this, to dealing with this with the city of San Rafael. Is that okay? Uh, now, is this a public comment thing? Uh, I would take one last round of comments on okay. yes. So I'm going to open this up to public comment. It seems John? to me you guys do. You know, you're, you're the board members here, and everybody's been sort of reluctant to be the two people to deal with the city of San Rafael. Yeah, you have Ron right here, who seems to be an expert. Are you going to pull him in somehow to get his opinions to help you on that stuff? No. We only call Ron when we want to throw the big guns at him. Okay, like no. if we're looking Sorry. to launch a nuclear bomb to well, blow things to smithereens, we send Ron. I don't know Ron, I just met Ron, and, you know, we got off that, but he's got good points here, so that's all I'm saying. I'll, I'll provide the two committee members with Trump's book, The Art of the Deal, so I can learn how to negotiate. Thank you, Ron. Um, all righty. So who are the board members that are going to be doing this? Jeff and myself. Um, okay, so can we move on now? So the date of the next fire commission meeting, item H7, we know is in January 2019. And then item I, we're a little behind time, but park and recreation matters, draft minutes of the PNR commission meeting is September 25th. Does anyone have any questions, comments? Here. The park and rec commission? Park and Rec, yes, we're on item I-1. I just, you're, you're just talking about the, their uh, minutes, right? Yes. Okay. Is that anything from the board? Mm -hmm. Anything from the public on item I-1? Yes. Um, so uh, the Park and Rec Commission is under the impression that uh, the public has been fully uh, engaged and I would like to, uh, I, I don't know where this information comes from. Eric also uh, said that he thought that there was enough involvement. Um, there hasn't been. And um, so it's clear, it's clear, it's, this, it's clear from uh, the minutes that the board is clueless to the real uh, passions of the people in uh, about Marinwood Park. So I would, I guess, it's in the minutes. I can't argue the minutes, but uh, I think information needs to get back to the board. Thanks. Okay. Anything else from the public on item I-1? Linda? Um, I'm a little confused about, we're still talking about minutes, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. talking about minutes. I'm still a little confused about, unfortunately, I was uh, unable to go to the Park and Rec commission meeting. And I had sent Mr. Valentine and the district manager and Luke an email, but I don't know who got it because Shane never responded to me and it was never discussed. But I'm very, very confused about a resident who suggested a, an ADA ramp from the pedestrian lane into the panhandle. And I don't ever recall hearing that happen but then again, I haven't been to all the Park and Rec Commission meetings in the last year. I've been to a few. But is that, is that still on the table? Or has, was anything decided? It, it's Where still you kind of. You're talking about Clyde Walk Street? You're talking about, at fir first, OK, first of all, four years ago, when I was on the pa Park and Rec Committee, I offered to pay $1,500 to put in a handrail. Handrail, handrail, handrail. Everybody was happy because I was going to pay for it. And then I got bashed at a meeting and I withdrew my 1500 bucks. I still wanted to keep that on the table, but it, 
ended up getting lost from your listing, okay? It was just a simple handrail. Then there was talk about steps, and steps would be horrible for bicyclists and uh, strollers. And now it's ADA ramps. So I, I'm very confused about this, and my letter to Mr. Valentine was asking him to put that on a, a new agenda item at some time in the future. Because once the, um, the old shed maintenance, blah, 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 gets torn down, nobody's gonna be able to walk through the entrance into the panhandle from Miller Creek Road. So they will be using the pedestrian lane from Quietwood into the panhandle. And that's gonna be extremely dangerous because of the incline and the buildup of six to 10 inches of leaves. So I feel it's very important for safety measures, for liability, for insurance, for whatever, that somebody think about it and talk about it and make a decision. And it seems like for the last four years, every single year I've been going to the panhandle inspection, I've gotten up at the top of the incline and I've said, please, let's put in a handrail and for four years it's gone nowhere. So is anything going to be done there, especially knowing that the entire Panhandle Western End will be blocked off for pedestrians, bicyclists, dog walkers, you know, strollers, whatever, for how many years while the new shed is being built? So I'm confused about it. Do you, was anything, decided was was any board member at that we oh, oh, yeah. I was not able to attend was there a decision made about I was not able to attend that meeting oh. because I had my back thrown out so I wasn't able to move that day but um, it seems like the minutes are the minutes don't really say and we're talking about the minutes right now so I, I think the best would be to follow up with the commission on that because I can't, I can't answer a question. Yeah. All right. I, I just want to say one quick thing about oh, that. So it doesn't so have to be ADA Stephen, if it's a trail. Stephen, Stephen, you got to filter. There's procedure here. Okay. Okay, could you call on me, please? <laughs> <laughs> you want to look wanted to say Okay. Well, I was just, well, that's a strong way to put it. But I, uh, <laughs> I don't think there was, Linda, I don't think there was any uh, decisions made at the commission meeting uh, as to putting in uh, handrail steps, paths, it was, a, it was discussed what the different uh, options might be, um, and I think that's about as far as it got. Okay, and, but and I was wasn't no, the one who said put a ramp in. Uh, and, sure. and no one was under the impression that you had asked for a ramp, and no one, I don't think, had asked for a ramp. I think there was just, uh, just conversations about different things and whether a ramp would be required if anything was done, whether that would fall under an ADA compliance situation. So it was just a, a conversation and there were no decisions. Okay, so no made. decisions made. Correct. Correct. Thank you. Um, so, so anyhow, I, I actually have a friend who specializes in handicap access for parks and he tells me that you really don't want it to be ADA compliant because it, it, it is legal, there are legal issues involved. However, you can follow the you know, the, the slope requirements and stuff like that. And I, you know, if Linda's talking about it, she's concerned. I, I, I see every day people of, uh, of, of uh, limited mobility down that path. And that's really one of the, the, the greatest things about that path is it's flat and it's accessible. And I really do feel that, especially if we're doing it we get it basically for free if Linda is offering it. I don't know. Well, not anymore. Not anymore. But <laughs> but it's a it's a very modest investment with with a I think a, a very worthwhile uh, return. So um, I I think you should put it on your agenda. Thank you. As it relates to the the landscaper uh, architect selection. Um, as I was able to glean from past court events before I was a resident, is that as it relates to the design and maintenance building, multiple architects bid on it, proposed Wait, are design. you on the meeting? The yeah, yeah, no, I just wanted to understand that how is the, dis the selection of the architect different than, mm -hmm. than it was for Bill Hanson? Because my understanding was there was proposals for designs for the maintenance shed, and after the fact, his design, 
his, his employment was selected with his design without feedback from the community. And I'm just wondering for the selection of this landscape architect, is that going to take a similar process where the board is going to select the design without the feedback of the community? Or are we going to see designs from different architects and have a say? I would refer that back to the Park and Rec Commission. So that's, I think, originating with them. Got it. So it's their decision. No, I'm happy to talk to you offline, Eric. I've invited you to come talk to me before. I'm happy to talk to you again. Um, to answer briefly, you know, hiring and engaging multiple architects to put together a plan uh, isn't necessarily how something like this would work. When you work with an architect on any level, they don't say, here's my plan, hire me to do it. You hire them, then they create the plan. You can have your initial discussions, but they don't put together a bunch of plans forthright and say, here's my design or here's this. You need to engage an architect that that gets into the work of the architect. So, so I appreciate the offer, and the reason I have to engage you is I think it's really important for the public to have formal responses from the leadership because there has been an accusation in the community that there's lies or uh, Jeff puts fancy accusations, and that's why it's very important for us to all hear from the right. same so person. I I, again, I would just encourage you to meet okay, there so online. We'll, we'll this go to been, this project has been underway for years, so I know you're just stepping in kind of like if the party tail end, but this has been a long yeah, process. Just a I haven't heard anything happening. about this. So, okay. And you do so get Stephen, design proposals, Stephen, you're out of line. design Stephen, ideas. Stephen. You're not, not plans, but design ideas. Right uh, RFP. Hey, excuse me, everybody. Can you please observe the decorum here? No. Okay, so we're on the draft minutes. Any further comments from the public? All right. We'll move on to item I2, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Reports. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the, the big things coming up for the rec department is our uh, Halloween Harvest Festival this Friday. Uh, from five to seven, we're excited to see all the kids coming in their costumes and um, got a good staff helping run that. And then our next event will be our uh, annual art and wine show on October 27th um, from three to seven. Those are our upcoming events. Um, coinciding with the Halloween Harvest Festival, the pool uh, has its last day this Friday as well. Um, we had a great season, um, but I'm also looking forward to uh, wrapping that up. And I'm uh, very grateful to our staff that have seen it through uh, to the end of the, of the season. A lot of great um, high school guards have uh, been working uh, tirelessly this fall. Um, one bit, bit of news that uh, was also in the commission uh, minutes, but uh, our new recreation supervisor, Lacey, um, has resigned. And um, we're starting the process of finding her replacement. Um, we wish her well. She pursues uh, some other um, opportunities, and we'll be um, excited to, you know, eventually get a, a whole department together. We've got Carolyn up in the front now, and um, we'll have a new uh, supervisor hopefully soon. And we're looking forward to the kind of new era uh, in the rec department. Um, any questions about the, the recreation side? Please. Any uh, comments from the public on item I2? Stephen? On, on what, what you just spoke on? You, you, this is park maintenance. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just talking to rec. I can, talk, okay. I can get through the rest of the park oh, maintenance okay. report, and then we can take comments if that's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was, just, I well, I was doing one at a time. Um, <clears throat> on the maintenance side of things, um, we are right now uh, getting into the part of the season where we assess uh, all of our drainage and infrastructure before the storm season. So we're looking at the creek, um, the V ditches, uh, the buildings, and making sure that we have everything um, in good condition before uh, we get any heavy rain. So the crew is um, working on that right now. We just uh, completed, well, we had uh, hired someone to complete um, a new top coat uh, to the tennis courts, uh, which we happened last uh, in September, early September. And um, as well as uh, we had some sidewalk repair done at the very end of August. Um, uh, yeah, so um, any questions about any of that? Um, I think that it was Parks and Rec, who maybe your contractor, but a bunch of tree trimming was done around uh, Bridgegate and Creekside and then the Idleberry Connection. Now, I don't know if that was vegetation management or just park maintenance, 
but it looks really good. I hired three masters to do that. Hopefully that's okay. Oh, well, I was going to take credit, but... It came out great too, didn't it? Yeah. yeah it, it really it cleaned up something that yeah. has been slowly accumulating for about 30 years now. So that was good. Uh, the other thing, just something to remember is, Luke, your predecessor put his foot through the roof of the maintenance shed trying to put a new tarp on it last week. <laughs> Be careful. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was there. I remember. <coughs> Tread lightly. I wanted to ask how it survived the rain. The, the, the rain we had last week. Um, it actually uh, did okay, um, but we got a big rip this last Sunday from the wind. Um, so there's now some new tears in the tarp, so I'm not sure. Uh, we're, we've got other plans to, to get a new one up there. Um, uh, sometime in the next month. So what color is it? Um, brown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> please, please ensure everybody's safe from here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions for the board? Questions or comments from the public? Linda? Um, in the park maintenance activities report from Lou. There was something about sidewalk repair, 165 trip hazards, and I have already sent him an email saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it, the six pedestrian lanes that I walk on are wonderful, except for one area, and I mentioned that to you, it's two and a half inches high. The sidewalk goes up two and a half inches, and these big feet can trip on that all the time. And I've already asked for a follow-up, but I haven't heard anything back from you. Oh, uh, so. yeah. I did get your email, and um, I actually am in contact with our concrete cutting company just to see whether that was uh, an oversight <coughs> or whether they physically couldn't perform that work because of the height. And we do have some right. remaining things that we can do on our end right. if they can't actually shave it down. So um, we're still following but up But it's on, on your radar. It is on my radar. Good. Thank but you. I do appreciate you, you know, following Thank up you. on that. And then the other question was about how about the next time it rains, filling in the huge, gigantic puddles that are running along the panhandle. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people and dogs and bicyclists and everything else, little old ladies and strollers and kids that walk up and down the panhandle weekly. And Lucas Valley Estates has beautiful landscaping, but we have puddles and mud to walk through. And after only the two inches of rain that we had last weekend, there was big, gigantic mud puddles. And I actually, walking a dog is very difficult, but I had to go into the grass, which was also muddy, to kind of get around the big puddles. So next time that it rains, is it possible to just take a few wheelbarrows full of rocks <coughs> and dirt and just put them on top of the puddles so that we don't have these big puddles to go through all the time? The problem, the problem when, oh, sorry, go ahead. I would probably, probably do it during while it's raining, but we do have plans to address some of that muddy area. With we do have gravel um, specifically for gravel that. So, um, just fill in the puddles. Yeah, that's that'd cool. be wonderful. Yeah. Also, there also a mess. Mess. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Um, who knows what the fastest growing sport is in the United States according to USA Today? It's pickleball. And um, I, I have actually had a conversation with uh, uh, Luke during this month because I asked uh, while they were doing resurfacing that they paint pickleball lines, but we had a rejection of that and he's going to study it. But I, I want, want the board to know that uh, pickleball is basically, uh, you can get two court, four courts for every uh, tennis court. Um, it's very popular. Uh, virtually all the communities around us have pickleball lines on their tennis courts, and uh, it's something that my neighbors play, and I know that there's other people in the neighborhood who would like to play it. It started mostly as retirees, but also young people are getting into it. Uh, they're teaching it in middle school. Uh, this is an opportunity to broaden our uh, rec offerings to seniors, uh, as well as uh, additional activities for the rest of the community. But uh, I think uh, I encourage uh, the board to encourage Luke to 
you look at some of these opportunities because uh, certainly there's a way we do great work with uh, kids in camp and after school, but we kind of lack uh, with activities for adults. Um, so that's item number one. Item number two is uh, concerning drainage and um, the uh, park maintenance shed. I know that there's uh, erosion happening on the eastern end of the uh, uh, maintenance facility. This problem is not going to go away. This area has been designated as the vehicle turnaround area. It's not stable. It's a very soft soil there and you've got drainage issues yeah. and that is one of the reasons why um, the current shed design that you have is really not going to uh, really be a very practical design. I did uh, send everybody uh, uh, everybody uh, an email uh, because I went down to McGinnis Park and they have a brand new shed for 450 acres, they manage 450 acres, you know the facilities down there. They've got six full-time people during the season, and um, they have a building that is 1,200 square feet, or about a third of what's been sold to us as the minimum size for Marinwood Park. Um, it's still not too late to do the right thing. Uh, people want, love their park, they also want to replace the shed. And so we can do both things, and it's going to start with uh, herbs option number three, and maybe we can use the uh, uh, McGinnis um, model as uh, uh, for our, our shed design. Um, this is not about a vanity project for uh, Mr. Hansel and wasting a huge Excuse amount of money. Thank you. Um, moving on, item I3, gate of the next Park and Recreation Commission meeting. October 23rd, and item J1, new and other business. Request for future meeting agenda items. Do we have anything What's from the board? Right? Um, oh, yeah. I think you have another comment. Oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, I just want to say that tennis courts look great, and I object to Stevens pickleball recommendation. <laughs> as, a, as a younger resident, I have no interest in seniors using those empty courts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Be honest. 
you know, we should be able to talk about budgets. We should be able to talk about the size of facilities, the impacts to the community. This is stuff we shouldn't argue about, but maybe discuss once, once we have a common set of facts. Thank you. Uh, anything else from the public comment item? <laughs> J1. Okay, moving on to item K, recognitions and board member items of interest. Um, I would like to thank Carolyn for filling the blanks uh, temporarily and just being two people at the same time and uh, yet again going above and beyond what her job description is. Her dedication to this community is, I think, far exceeds what many people realize. So thank you, Carolyn. You're welcome. Thank you. Sure. Yay. Yay. And are you going to go for the obvious one? I guess, but go ahead. The last meeting. Yes. Thank you. Get and the hell out of here. <laughs> And I, I have obviously not been here for your entire career, but I know that many people who have been on the board have valued your service to the community. And again, you're one of the you know, residents slash um, employees um, who, I think because of your dual role, have deeper understanding of the district matters. and. Um, again go above and beyond um so thank you for so many years of your service for your patience with crazy board members and crazy <laughs> public uh, uh members and uh, members of the audience whatever and uh for thank you for just keeping the eye on the ball for so many years so. it's been great man i've had a role and it's been a lot of fun and we all really want the same thing Seeing you having a beard? No, but you know, everyone's passionate about Renwood, that's why we're here, so I understand that. I, I will say, I've been having Gary flashbacks every time I look down at the end of the table tonight. And, uh, <laughs> with the beard and the white t shirt, you, you really got it down pretty good there. I, I don't think Gary wore a shirt for the last summer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to put you through that. <laughs> no, I echo what like, Isabel said. I really enjoy working with you, Tom. It's, uh, it's been a privilege to get to know Nice thong. Oh, thongs. Thongs, oh, yes. Right. Well, I, I, as a new guy on the board, I didn't get to work with you as long as the others have. But I, I appreciate what you've done. Uh, I appreciate you've kept us safe. Uh, and uh, I just wonder why you're even still here. I got thrown out as soon as I grew up here. <laughs> well, it started uh, about two weeks ago. So we'll see. I, I'm getting on a plane November 1st. and go to visit some friends with my son. That's kind of where this is going. But anyway. The one way of flight. <laughs> so, <laughs> this one isn't, but one soon after is. <laughs> I'd definitely like to echo everything everyone said. And it feels really good to be here. And I think it's
He's doing much better than he's just not doing business with him. Yeah, he's, he's definitely on his way, so. All right, any comments from the public on anything, Stephen? Yeah, I just uh, want to uh, thank Chief Roach. Uh, we had our moments. But um, the, um, there are probably a lot of things uh, that I've never seen. We never actually truly know one another. And um, I have always had the sense with uh, Tom that he is an extraordinary uh, individual in terms of his care for the community and uh, the fellow fellow man. And uh, I wish him well, well on his next chapter. Thanks, Stephen. That's what we have to talk about Tom anymore. Home. <laughs> yeah, you're making me all weak. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's you, right? There's a hug. Race, so I got <laughs> and the only problem is you way too much of you. Yeah, right. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have walked through the panhandle recently, but I would like to thank Stephen for all the wonderful, wonderful Miwok pictures and information on all the ped pedestals. There's different, there's like, there are villages, there are uh, tools, there are children, there are school, I mean, the whole thing, it's like a new storybook about the Miwok Indians. And we have a lot of, we had a lot of them in our own neighborhood. So if you get a chance, you should look, but thanks, Stephen, for it. Okay. They're I, really beautiful. I'm, I just want to clarify something. All that information actually came from Dixie Schoolhouse uh, or that uh, Chief Roach is on the board of, uh, and it was all all their editorial. All I did was was typeset it. So oh. I, I don't want to I don't want to take really credit for it. It's that's Dixie Schoolhouse. But you put it up. I put it up. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. I have a motion to.